grew up on a dairy farm in the UK and as such, I've always had a soft spot for vehicles that served more than one purpose. I mean, the original Land Rover, the one that gave rise to the Series 2, 3 and eventually original Defender, was born because farmers in post-war Great Britain needed an off-road capable vehicle that they could use to plough fields, carry out farm work and then carry the produce and their family to the local market. And yes, I've ploughed a field with a Land Rover Series 1. It was awesome. In the US, where things weren't quite as much in short supply post-World War II, the pickup truck was the preferred vehicle of farmers wanting to get things to and from market, feed to animals and whatever else they needed hauling. And in the time since, the pickup truck has become an instantly recognisable symbol of the nation. And that's for a good reason. Pickup trucks now outsell passenger cars in the US, that's sedans, hatchbacks, coupes and convertibles, three to one. Granted, more SUVs are sold than cars and trucks combined, but pickup trucks are still big nonetheless. Which is why it was such a big deal when Ford began production and deliveries of its F-150 Lightning electric pickup truck. Not only has the F-150 and its larger siblings, aka the F-Series family, been the US's number one selling vehicle for more than four decades, but it's also one of the most instantly recognisable work trucks out there. And electrifying the F-150 rather than making an all-new electric lifestyle truck was a brave move on Ford's part, especially with a 40,000 US dollar starting price for the entry-level Ford F-150 Lightning Pro. But, well, the F-150 Lightning is a full-size truck. It's big really big. I mean, I know. I've had to learn how to park my own in the last two weeks. And for many customers, it's just too large. That's led many to ask if or when Ford would electrify some of its smaller pickups. And earlier today, we heard that Ford is going to do just that, thanks to the news that it's trademarked the term Ford Maverick Lightning and Ford Ranger Lightning in Europe, and Ford Maverick Thunder and Ford Ranger Thunder in North America. So today, I'm going to speculate a bit about these two potential trucks, try to figure out what we should expect, and explain who such a vehicle might before. But first, just a quick reminder to hit subscribe and the bell if you haven't already, and if you'd like to join the more than 1,400 people who help fund this channel on a monthly basis, stick around until the end and I'll tell you how. Before we go down the speculation avenue, let's deal with some facts as we know them right now. Back at the launch event for the F-150 Lightning, Ford's CEO Jim Farley confirmed that Ford was already beginning construction at Blue Oval City, Tennessee for a new factory where an electric pickup truck would be made that was quote-unquote different to this one, meaning the F-150, hinting that such a vehicle was already undergoing testing at Ford. Farley also said last year that a family of Maverick variants, including an all-electric model, were being explored by Ford, and today's news, as broken by car buzz, certainly seems to back that up. The publication notes that Ford applied to the European Union Intellectual Property Office, or UPO for short, to trademark both Maverick Lightning and Ranger Lightning. Both filings use the same descriptive classification for the trademark, reading, quote, motor vehicles, namely automobiles, pickup trucks, electric vehicles in the nature of automobiles, pickup trucks, sport utility vehicles, and their structural parts, end quote. Meanwhile, in the US, Ford has applied to trademark the name Ranger Thunder and Maverick Thunder in a similar classification with the USTPO in two filings that actually use the same language as the European trademark applications in describing what the name would be used for. These pieces of information, as far as I'm concerned, make things pretty darned clear. Ford is actively looking to make electric versions of both pickups. Given Ford had previously promised it would dominate the electric pickup market, this comes as no surprise. But why electrify the Ranger and the Maverick? 
As Ford's so-called international pickup, electrifying the Ranger makes good business sense, and the Ranger is sold in many more markets around the world than the massive F-150. And in order to capture those non-US market electric pickup truck buyers, Ford needs a smaller pickup model to electrify. Additionally, it makes sense that the Ranger is getting electrified because it was recently given a ground-up redesign with the so-called second-generation Ford Ranger T6.2 launching in 2021 for the 2022 model year. We know that redesign included the ability to build a plug-in hybrid Ranger, a truck that's coming to market soon, so why not an all-electric model as well? Additionally, we know that Ford and Volkswagen are working together on future pickup models, so this all starts to make a lot of sense. Similarly, the Maverick, still fresh from its launch, is already available as a hybrid, and we know, again, there's a plug-in hybrid variant on the way. A fully electric model does feel like the next logical step. Except, what's with this difference in naming? Why use the term thunder in North America and lightning in Europe? Especially when lightning is already used in North America to refer to an electric pickup. I have a theory, and it doesn't include bunnies. The term thunder to refer to a pickup is, I think, Ford's attempt to use thunder to refer to a plug-in hybrid variant. As it stands right now, the F-150 Lightning extended range has a real-world range of around 300 miles, depending on what you put in in the truck and how you drive. Yes, I know the EPA range test is larger, but in my experience, 300 miles, 482 kilometers, is about all you're going to get on the freeway if your bed is open and you're driving at highway speeds. It goes without saying that pickup trucks, while incredibly practical, are not really the most aerodynamic of vehicles, and if we consider that the Ranger and Maverick are noticeably smaller than the F-150, then we have to assume they will have smaller battery packs too, and smaller ranges. Which is where a plug-in hybrid variant would come in, offering maybe 50 miles or 80 kilometers of EV-only range, with a plug-in hybrid drivetrain configuration under the Thunder suffix, both vehicles would be similarly performance-oriented to the F-150 Lightning, but also have range-extending options for longer trips for American buyers. In Europe, however, where we know there is an impending ban on all new internal combustion engine vehicle sales in just over a decade's time, going fully electric for both the Ranger and the Maverick would allow Ford to reach full compliance on an electric transition well ahead of schedule. In markets where a modest drop in range over the F-150 would frankly be more than acceptable. If it came in a smaller, more manoeuvrable truck with rapid charging and decent load carrying capabilities, I think it would sell. And it doesn't make sense to trademark a plug-in hybrid vehicle there, as battery electric vehicles are in fact the preferred plug-in choice for most European consumers. But in North America? Well, there's no mandated set in stone date by which new internal combustion engine vehicles will be banned in the US. In fact, the federal government has talked about it plenty, but nobody has actually set a date into law at which ICE vehicles will be banned. Only some states have done it, like Washington, for example. A plug-in hybrid model could therefore be a transitional vehicle to help customers get used to the idea of going electric, because many people in the US still don't know how electric works. To be clear though, I don't know if Ford has actually trademarked lightning suffixes for the Ranger or Maverick in North America, so I'm not entirely sure if we will actually see all electric versions of these trucks go on sale, but I hope we see those alongside a plug-in hybrid. 
But honestly, I can't see the term thunder referring to an electric truck if the term lightning is already evoking some pretty strong emotional responses in US buyers. I mean, right now, as a lightning owner, all I have to do is park up my F-150 lightning and people start to come over and ask me questions. It's already known as the truck that can do the stoplight sprint in four and a bit seconds, the truck that has a massive front trunk and the truck that can power your home in in a power cut. Legitimately, people wave at us on the freeway. Regular truck folks come over to see this truck whenever I'm parked, and even folk who have never even seen or know of the F-150 Lightning have a lot of questions about why it's so quiet, or why we are lifting things into or out of the front rather than the bed. When a brand, a name, is making that big a wave already after just a few months, you wouldn't change the suffix to a different yet related name for two electric versions of the F-150's little siblings. Now, would you? So, here is my prediction. I think we're going to see the Ranger Lightning and Maverick Lightning become a go-to choice in the global electric pickup truck market, and the Ranger Thunder and Maverick Thunder become halfway houses in the form of plug-in hybrids to a full electric vehicle in North America, while the F-150 Lightning will back them up with beefier, more capable electric performance. Will the Ranger Lightning and Maverick Lightning be sold in North America alongside the Ranger Thunder and Maverick Thunder? I'd like to think so, but I'm also not getting too excited about it. Price-wise, I'm thinking a starting price of around the 30 to 35,000 mark would make sense for the Lightnings anymore and people won't buy them. And I'm thinking front wheel and all wheel drives will be optional, similar to the Mustang Mark E. And I'm thinking a similar battery pack size to the Mark E2. So think 75-ish kilowatt hours for a standard range and maybe 98 kilowatt hours for an extended range. As for pro power, I think it will be an optional extra, maybe standard on higher trim levels, but I don't expect either vehicle to have the same power your home foo that the F-150 Lightning offers. It's conceivable that a more modestly sized vehicle to home integration system might be designed and maybe even included. But given that the F-150 Lightning home integration system costs four and a half grand on top of the price of the truck, I don't see either the Ranger Lightning or indeed the Maverick Lightning offering that as a value add. But remember, this is just my musing based on what I know about Ford to date. I could be and probably am wrong. So leave me your thoughts below. If you liked the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends. And don't forget to leave your thoughts below or in our free to join Discord chat room. There are links in the video description. And if you really liked today's video, why not leave us a super thanks? It is super easy to do, barely an inconvenience, and everything you send does go towards helping us make great content. If you haven't already, please make sure that you have subscribed to this channel and our other channel, Transport Evolved Take Two, and give that bell a gentle ding to make sure that you are told when our next video goes live. Thanks on behalf of the entire crew, go out to everyone who makes this possible. That includes everyone who supports us financially on Patreon and YouTube, as well as those of you who just watch our videos and share it with your friends. If you are a supporter at the charged up level, you'll see your name right here on my right. And if you just joined, I'm sorry if your name isn't showing. We currently render our list every week or so, and sometimes our videos are produced a few weeks in advance, so there may be a lag. Thanks to our self-driving tier supporters, Chris Maxwell, Pedro Muro-Pinheiro, Patrick Boyarski, Bennett Elder, Brian Newton, Dave Kitchen, Michael Goad, Ricky Leon, Andrew Martin, Guido Trajota, Brophy Wolf, Tesla in the Gong, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Carl Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Ray Jean Fellows, Dan Blair, Jim Burness, Chris Asenta, Chris and Michael Johnson, Peter Dillinger and Denny Hyde, and of course... Out of this world thanks to our Starman level supporters. Anonymous Freak, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, Rory Litwin, Joe Bresney, Reed R, JP Fagerback, Russ, Will Graylin, Matthew Drobnak, Blue Says Hello, Kevin Boroughbridge, John Lyons, Andrew Glenn, Paul Conway, Laura Reynolds, Ellery Hensley, and 
Ian. If you would like to be part of that amazing list, you can join Patreon at the link below, hit the join button to support us on YouTube, or you can show us your support through Bitcoin, Ko-fi, or our cool swag store. There are links below. And if you are unable to support us financially, just know that watching the video and sharing it with your friends and family really makes a big difference to our ad revenue. Thanks for joining me, and as always, keep evolving.